In this screencast, we're going to talk about another advanced control topic called scheduling controller tuning. <clears throat> this is especially important if your process is highly nonlinear. Because if you choose PID control algorithms from a linearized model of your system, those same PID controller algorithms can result in ringing behavior for one particular kind of disturbance, and then a sluggish return to steady state for the exact same kind of disturbance, but in the opposite direction. So as an example, consider this endothermic CSTR, <clears throat> which we've already talked about in class a little bit. So imagine that at time t equals zero seconds, there's a stepped disturbance change in the feed concentration. So you have your feed concentration here, C, A, feed. I'm, I'm going to call that a function of time because there is a disturbance variable at time, uh, it acts as a disturbance variable and changes at time t equals zero. It's a step disturbance change, and it's a, we're going to look at the scenario where in one case, as a function of time, your feed concentration jumps up, and another case, and when it jumps down. What happens when, um, when this disturbance variable increases versus decreases? Now in this case, what we're going to imagine is that we're going to have our product stream has a temperature sensor on it. And so what we want is we want to make sure that we maintain product stream temperature. So you have a temperature controller. And this control signal is being sent to an actuator on the steam line. And so that's the kind of control method that are the, the feedback control that we're looking at in this case. Now the model equations, we've already derived the model equations for this um, scenario in, in example 3.4 out of the book. And so here are our model equations. Now what you might notice here is that this, and this term also appears there, this is a highly nonlinear term, nonlinear term. And so because of that, just a simple linearized model may not work very well with the endothermic CSTR. In fact, what we see, and this is um, how the book illustrates it, if you have a step decrease in your CA feed, I guess it was it's called CA0, right? So if you have a step decrease, a decrease in CA feed, CA0, leads to ringing. which is what you have there. But a step decrease leads to a sluggish response. And notice that these, this is the same magnitude of step increase and decrease. Sorry, I should do that. Same magnitude of a step decrease and increase. But depending on which direction you're going, you have a completely different kind of dynamic behavior in your CSTR um, process uh, feedback control loop with the exact same values of the PID parameters. So for the same values of the PID parameters, a change in one direction leads to ringing and a change in the other direction leads to a slow response. Now this cannot happen in a linear system. In a linearized system, the model would predict that you would get the exact same kind of dynamic response, regardless of how large your disturbance is or in which direction. You get the same kind of dynamic response. Of course, if you have a larger disturbance, the response will be larger, but it would be ringing no matter whether it is a large magnitude of disturbance or a small one, no matter whether it is um, a disturbance that is, has a um, positive change in the disturbance variable or a negative change. It will always have the same kind of dynamic response. So if you have a perfectly linear model, you can always program a single set of PID parameters and you'll always have the same response. However, in the real world, especially in things like CSTRs, which have these highly nonlinear terms in them, all bets are off. So as you can see in this example, with the exact same PID parameters, you can get 
um, two different, very different kinds of dynamic responses. And so what you need to do for this is that the PID controller parameters need to be retuned online, so auto, in an automated fashion, to ensure that the aggressiveness of the controller is appropriate. So what you need to do is the engineer needs to understand what the system will do, how it will behave depending on what kind of disturbance you get, and then come up with a way um, with, with basically PID tuning parameters for um, basically every kind or magnitude or direction of your disturbance. So for example, and this is called controller scheduling, right? Because what you have, I mean, it's an old, old school term, but what you basically have is you have a schedule or a table which says, okay, so if the difference between my product temperature and my set point becomes this value, then I want to, to make a parameter called FT, I want to, it to take on this value. If my difference in um, objective and set point is this value, then I want the, the value of some tuning parameter FT to be this value etc. And so this is called scheduling and so your PD, PID controller parameters will be functions of this um, particular uh, uh, process variable here, this process variable measurement. So the way that works is that you would say, okay, I'm going to make my proportional constant KC, I'm going to make it equal to some KC0 divided by this f tuning parameter FT. And I'm going to make my tau i equal to some tau i zero times my tuning parameter FT. And so with this kind of scheduling so that the PID control parameters change depending on the value of this process measurement according to this schedule or this table, then if you do have scheduling you might have a scenario where your response is oscillatory but dies out over time. But if you don't use scheduling and you have the wrong values of the PID tuning parameters, you may find yourself in an unstable situation. Now note one last thing before we close this screencast. When, in this scenario, when you change your controller parameters, controller parameters, this is no longer a linear control model, right? And so in order to combat the highly nonlinear response of your CSTR, you need to make a nonlinear control model, and that, that's basically what this is. So your controller algorithm now essentially becomes your controller signal being equal to some C bar times KC, which is now a function of T, instead of just being a constant, times E of T plus 1 over tau I, which is now a function of temperature, times E, the integral of E dt, etc.